Hi and welcome. In this video we'll be talking about Archi2, Terraform. I made a project put on GitHub. We'll be trying that out today in this video, so I hope you like it. This is the website of Archi2 where you can find installation guides and all that. Um, I made a project on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description and um, we will start. So if we go to the repository here, we can see we have a TMS. And in here, we have all the data we need to set it up. Um, so in this case, we need an image. I base it on Ubuntu 18.04. Um, you need to put the Kubernetes, oh, sorry, the, the disks somewhere. And this is the path. So you need to edit these two if you have someone, something else. Then there's a SSH password to the nodes. And in the readme, there's a description on how you can change this to something else and also the defaults. Um, it's also in plain text here. And I'll be working on how to solve that. Um, it doesn't make sense to have it twice at least. Um, so this is the password, yes. And then the username here is Kubernetes and you can change that as well. Then our key uses a secret token to connect new nodes to the control plane. And that's what you specify here, secret token. And then you specify the IP you want for the uh, control plane. And in this case, I've chosen this one. Um, currently, it only supports one control plane. Um, and as this is intended to run on a laptop on Libvian and, and KVM, it doesn't make sense to do a HA, I think. So we'll see when, when we get to that. Um, yeah, so let's see here how many CPUs, how much memory and the disk size, of course. Um, and every machine, uh, or sorry, the, the server or control plane will get these. And then you can specify the same things for the worker nodes here. Right, so then let's have a look. Um, there's a make file, so we can do make uh, tf -int. And you can see here that I use this libviet provider for Terraform. And then we can do a tf, uh, sorry, make tf plan. And then we can see exactly what we get. Currently I get two worker nodes and one control plane. So let's make the cluster. So now it'll start creating the machines and then it will wait for SSH to be available. Then it will uh, SSH into it and start doing its thing. I use cloud init to install our key. So what it does is it um, adds a, um, a service, a systemd service, and then uh, installs our key too and enables it and starts it. It also uh, disable um, swap. So that's a Kubernetes thing. Now we can see that it's trying to do a remote exec into the machines. Um, so it'll take some time. And then when you're done, or when Terraform is done, we can get the kubeconfig file and we can start doing kubectl commands. But it'll take uh, it'll take a couple of minutes. So I'll be fast forward. So now we can see the, the servers done. Now we're waiting for the worker nodes to be done. Should be in a minute now. And then Terraform is done. So now we need to fetch our kubeconfig file and uh, get access to the cluster. So 
In the README at the very bottom, I have a section where I describe how you can do that. And uh, you can run this command. Uh, the IP is fixed and uh, you can find it in Terraform TFVAS. And then you can actually, now this command will put it directly in your .cube config file and overwrite whatever you have in it. So you shouldn't do that if you already have one, of course. But in this case, I, it, this is the only cluster I have. So now I have to, so you will see this uh, many times. Um, so it, you need to remove these IPs from known hosts because every time you create a new one, it won't trust the old one. Uh, yeah. So here, and then the password, it was Softica. And now it won't work because if we look in .cube config, we can see that it has 127.0.0.1 and that's not going to work. So we need to take the IP address here and then put here instead. So let's do that. And then ctl get nodes and they're not ready yet. So things are starting up, all the network stuff so ctl get parts we can see some are pending some are running some are completed so it's starting canal uh, the network thing and the proxy containers that will create the service network for you so now we just have to wait for this to be done um, so we can do like this. We can see now the control plane is ready. So that's a good thing. Now we're waiting for the worker nodes. It shouldn't be that long. So it's creating the core DNS and the core DNS autoscaler as well, giving us DNS in the cluster. An ingress metric server, a lot of good stuff. And we can see the controller managers running here, etcd, API server, oh, this is the cloud controller manager, this is the cube controller manager. So now the pods are initializing, should be ready anytime. One of them is ready. All the nodes are now saying that they're ready. So that's good. So let's just give it a minute and see how much time it will take when they're ready. Arc 2 is a compliant uh, Kubernetes distribution. So they use special uh, compilers and stuff like that uh, to be compliant. Now things are getting started and running. This project is meant for you to be able to spin up a multi-cluster on your own machine, easy and, and relatively fast, and play with Archie 2 and see how, it's, how it works and uh, if it's something you want to use on your infrastructure. I use it for teaching. So I teach Kubernetes and Docker and I use it on my laptop for that. We can see here that it's a 1.21.4 version, so that's good. So now the rest should be ready in a minute or so. Now we get the Nginx ingress controller so that we can use ingress objects and expose services outside the cluster as well. Still need one core DNS to be ready. So 
now the metric server is up, so that's good. Then we can deploy Prometheus and Scrape for metrics if we want. And now the last Cordiness is ready. So we just need the ingress controller. It's probably pulling the images and starting the containers and so on. So yes, that was my project. Um, let's see if we can go back to the terminal or the, sorry, the, the browser here. Um, it's a very new project I made. So if you find anything that you think should be different then by all means create an issue or pull request that would be awesome and uh, i hope you like this video and uh, see you next time thank you bye